Good morning. All right. So uh, it is Wednesday. We're going to do a little review for two days of review for Friday's quiz. So you guys are going to rock and roll with this. So this is more of a reteach today as is tomorrow. So first questions first. My first example is I want you guys to find the quadratic equation from this table. Okay. So next week, we're going to be working on some uh, harder ones where your C, where your y-intercept is not zero, zero, where it's not zero. And that's going to be a new lesson for next week. So we'll get there eventually. Right now, uh, because we know our y-intercept is zero, we know our C is zero. Remember, ax squared plus bx plus c when x is zero, what is the y-intercept? That's how I know it so quickly. Now I'm going to use systems of equations to now um, figure out what my a and my b coefficients are. So first things first, I know that when y is negative 1, x is 1. So I got a times 1 squared plus b times 1. Negative 1 equals a plus b. And I'll write this in terms of a. So I'll subtract b from both sides. So a equals negative 1 minus b. We'll use that in a minute. Right here, 27 equals a times negative 3 squared plus b times negative 3, which simplifies to 27 equals 9a minus 3b. And now I'm going to solve, and I've already got my uh, one expression in terms of a, so I'm going to go ahead and replace that with a down here. So I have 27 equals 9 times negative 1 minus b minus 3b. So now I have 27 equals negative 9 minus 9b minus 3b. I'm going to add 9. We all see this. I hope so. I think so. Let's try this a little small. Add 9 to both sides. I'm going to have 36 equals negative 12b divided by negative 12 on both sides. So b is going to equal negative 3. If b equals negative 3, well, a equals negative 1 minus negative 3, which is plus positive. a equals negative 1 plus 3, so your a equals 2. So the equation for this table right here, based on all this work, is going to be 2x squared plus, not plus, that's minus, minus 3b uh, equals y, or f of x. Um, sorry, minus 3x. That's good enough. There's your quadratic equation from this table. Next week, we're going into higher level stuff. Again, you'll learn that next week with me, so let's not worry about that now. Just know that all of these examples for this week have a y-intercept of zero. So I'm bringing back something we did last week, making sure you haven't forgotten about it. I want you guys to identify the vertex and the axis of symmetry by looking at a graph. And I know there were some issues with this, but I want to make sure there's no more. Vertex is right there at this point. So you would identify this as vertex is at 3, comma 2. And you would call this a minimum because it opens up. And the axis of symmetry is x equals, remember, it's that the vertical line, it's at x equals positive 3, okay? So, so those are <laughs> two of the examples and stuff you'll see today, help you through it. And I'll get this more in one second. All right, so here we go. My third example, uh, this again will be some stuff that looks like what you'll see on today's work. And uh, my instructions say identify as linear or quadratic and identify the constant terms. Now, Constant term for quadratic is different for the constant term than a linear. All right, so clearly I know this is linear and this is quadratic, and you'll see why, because you got to carry out the work. So carry out FOIL, you're going to get 3x squared plus 6x minus x minus 2, which now simplifies to 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. My constant term here is the y-intercept. That is a constant term, negative 2, okay? Now over here, on this one, carry out the Schrodinger property, okay? So I do this times this, I get 4x plus 8 minus 3x plus 9. And when I combine my terms, 
I'm going to get x plus 17. Okay? Now, for this one, your constant term is 1. It's whatever the slope is of this linear equation. So this is linear. This is quadratic. Remember, the key difference between constant terms in both of these expressions, constant term for quadratic is the y-intercept. The constant term for the linear expression is the slope, the number in front of that x. Okay? See you in a few seconds. All right, this is going to be my last example for today. Um, this is find the minimum, maximum using completing the square and then graph. So that means we're going to find the vertex, and then we're going to find the solutions, and then we're going to graph it, all from using this, uh, this concept of completing the square. So first things first, uh, I got to divide out the five of these first two terms and then create the parentheses. So I got five. I get x squared minus 2x, half of this is negative 1 squared, and that is positive 1. I then multiply this by this. I brought in a positive 5 that wasn't there. I take out a negative 5, and this stays on the outside like such. So now when I go one step further, this is now 5 times x minus 1 squared minus 9 equals 0. So we've identified our vertex, the opposite of this, which is 1, comma, negative 9. Now, let's go one step further, and let's now solve for the solutions, for the potential x-intercepts, if they have any. All right, so I'm going to now solve using the square roots. Okay, so I'm going to just add 9 to both sides. I got 5 times x minus 1 squared. Uh, equals 9, and this will have an x-intercept because this is going to be a positive answer because I'm now going to divide both sides by 5. So now this says x minus 1 squared equals 9 fifths, but i got to solve for x, so now I do the inverse of squaring, so I get the square root. Now I've already done this calculation. The square root of 9 fifths is positive 1.3, so I'm going to have an answer of x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus 1.3. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. My x-intercepts are either 1.3 plus 1, which is 2.3, or x, and this is, a, this is an abbreviated, I'm um, sorry, an estimated answer. And I'm going to do negative 1.3 plus 1, which is negative 0.3. So there are my x-intercepts, my zeros, all right, my solutions. I have enough points to now graph my line. Okay, or not my line, my, my uh, quadratic function. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So my vertex was at 1 positive, I'm sorry, 1 negative 9. My x-intercept is at 2.3, so that's right about there, we'll say, and negative 0.3. Let's call that right about there. That's good enough. This is just getting us into habits. Okay, and um, look how I drew this graph, and I almost did it correctly. I almost went through negative 4, which is the y-intercept, according to this. So I was close enough, but again, I did this on freehand. You guys are doing a graph paper. I'm sure you get a much more accurate answer than I will. Um, this is kind of a quick and easy of uh, what we've been doing thus far with quadratics. Uh, I'm going to have... Plenty of work for you guys to do today. Keep you busy. Ask me questions. Make sure you come and see me for any questions you have. This is straight arithmetic. There are going to be four word-based questions that I'm not going over right now because I want to see what you guys can apply through what we've been doing so far based on the questions themselves. So come and see me and let me know what questions you have.